Simsbury's first selectman, Mary Glassman, is running for lieutenant governor. She talks about the Lamont Glassman team. Also, keeping up with Connecticut politics is a full-time job. Pat Scully has been doing it for years. He's here to tell us which races to watch. And the capital city is in transition. Some might say in distress. We consider Hartford's future. Hi, you're watching The Real Story. I'm Lori Perez. Mary Glassman is a six-term first selectman in Simsbury who's run for lieutenant governor before winning the Democratic primary in 2006. She's an attorney. She was chief of staff in the lieutenant governor's office. She served in the state capitol. Now she wants to get back there. She is Ned Lamont's running mate. Mary, thanks for being here. Thanks I wanted to have, have you on the show for a long time Thank now. you very much for inviting me. Trying to work it out. Now, as someone who has worked in the lieutenant governor's office, as someone who has run for the position before, you must think it's a, a very important seat. Tell me what um, you consider the role of lieutenant governor will be. Well, thanks, Lori, for having me. And I am so excited and so ready to be the next lieutenant governor for the state of Connecticut. Uh, with my running mate, Ned Lamont, we are going to change the way Connecticut works. And mm -hmm. I do think that you need a, a governor and a lieutenant governor who are ready to get to work for the people of Connecticut to really address so many of the challenges facing our state. And the role of lieutenant governor is very important because, as we've seen in other states, you can be an active partner with the governor in terms of getting bonding under control, in terms of working with cities and towns, promoting education and transportation. And those are really the big issues facing our state. Do you think that it will be an increased role because of the fact that uh, we do have such this, this huge deficit and, and perhaps you might have to play an increased role? Ned and I have talked about that, and I think you'll see a real difference in the role of governor and lieutenant governor with the Lamont Glassman administration. Uh, we're going to see a governor who goes to Washington to roll up his sleeves and get money back federal dollars back to our state for so many desperate programs that we need. You're going to see a lieutenant governor that's active, meeting with mayors, for selectmen. I know that from my experience yeah. as a chief elected official in Simsbury, uh, meeting with the business community. So you're going to see a very different administration, a very active administration that builds partnerships and consensus and cooperation, and, and it's going to be very different for Connecticut. So tell me about the collaboration that you might be able to build because you do have such experience as a first selectman. Um, you know, what successes have you had in Simsbury that you think could translate? Well, I think Lori, what makes me so ready to be lieutenant governor is a couple of things that we've done in Simsbury. We've uh, brought our fiscal house in order in our community. Uh, we fund our pension obligations. We were one of the first towns in Connecticut that funded other post-employment benefit retiree health plans. Uh, we have a triple A bond rating. Ironically, we were just upgraded to the highest bond rating um, in, that you can get at the same time that the state's bond rating was lowered. And what does that mean? It means for taxpayers as, as towns and as the state goes out to bond, in, at the state's case, it could mean uh, more more costs for taxpayers. So you'll see uh, that we'll work on, on those issues. Um, in our community, we were able to present uh, two zero budgets over the last two years. I think that's something we need to do in Connecticut. I mean, why do you think you were able to do that in Simsbury? I mean, I know it's a it's a affluent town. Um, I think it's it's no different in Simsbury than other communities that have done it. It's creativity. It's efficiency. It's looking at ways to do things uh, better, faster, and cheaper. For it's instance, like setting goals and, and, and sticking to it, something that Connecticut really hasn't done in a long time. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we're really proud of is that we were just uh, designated the top 100 best towns to live in, and we were uh, the first town in Connecticut to be designated a bike-friendly community. Nice, yeah. So as you talk about why Simsbury um, to be the first town in Connecticut, well, we set goals and we looked at places that do it better. Uh, Portland, Oregon, for example, yeah. that's uh, the platinum standard for bike-friendly communities. We said, why do they do it so well and how can we do it better? And we need to take that all across Connecticut to make sure that we invest in intermodal transportation, get people out of their cars, on bikes, on rails, uh, you know, on trains and move people better throughout Connecticut. Right, because I know that most people agree that transportation is really going to be key to building a strong economy, to bringing jobs here. And you have mentioned, um, I've gotten press releases from you mentioning bikes are going to be um, part of your uh, statewide transportation initiative. What do you envision uh, realistically how people are using, how people might use bikes um, statewide? Well, we just, uh, we just announced our transportation policy this week. We actually were on the Metro North train going from Stanford to New Haven. Mm -hmm. So we got a chance to talk to folks on the train about why they're commuting and why they're using the train and why they're 
there are not more people on the trains. And um, we, heard, we heard exactly what, what we need to be doing as a state, investing more in more frequent transportation, uh, making it easier, for example, to bring your bike on a train so you can ride your bike to work and ride your bike to the train station, hop a train, get to work. Um, and, and we haven't had a state that's had the fiscal discipline, a governor who's had the fiscal discipline to take the transportation funds and invest it in transportation. So I think being, you know, having the capital city of Hartford uh, near New York and Boston, we have tremendous opportunities uh, to really leverage the economic development in our state with high-speed rail and with a better transportation system. Tell me about your pairing up with Ned Lamont and why you decided to do that and why you want him to be governor. I think that Ned is the right person at the right time. Uh, when we look at our state and where we fall behind so many areas, uh, we have the widest education gap in the country. We are the wealthiest state in the country, yet we have the poorest children in our capital city. And when you look at transportation, uh, where we fail in terms of supporting our infrastructure system, our roads and our bridges that are in disrepair. Um, you know, we, now is the time to have someone in the governor's office who understands how to bring that pro private public partnership together to bring the business community to help create jobs to bring uh, an education workforce uh, education to workforce pipeline where you can collaborate and prepare our students for the jobs that we're going to need to build in the future so net is the right person having had experience in the private sector to take those best business practices and bring them to the state of connecticut where they are so desperately needed. Is there something about, about Ned or, or about yourself that you think um, is not getting out that might be uh, interesting or important for people to know? Uh, just that Ned and I are ready to go to work for the people of Connecticut. We are the right team for Connecticut at the right time. Uh, Ned's experience in building a business and knowing how to build that efficient systems mm -hmm. is exactly what Connecticut needs. Uh, my experience as a six-term first selectman in a Republican town, yeah. I was the first Democrat elected in nearly 50 years. Um, I served uh, as a staff attorney at the Capitol where I worked on education policy, transportation policy. I actually worked in the chief, uh, as chief of staff and lieutenant governor's office. Uh, so I don't think there's anyone, any team more prepared to bring change and a new energy and new ideas ideas to the state of Connecticut than we are. And you know, of course, that it will not be um, an easy job. If, uh, I mean, you're going to be perhaps vilified. People are going to be very critical. You have a very challenging job ahead of you in terms of tackling the budget. Tremendous challenges, but, Lori, tremendous opportunities. If you look at how other states are getting it right, how they're investing in education and transportation, our cities, New Haven, that are building those partnerships uh, with teachers and parents and, and government officials, we need to bring that same energy and that same uh, good business practice to the state of Connecticut. We need to get our fiscal house in order. That means uh, we need to stop borrowing to pay for the past. We've uh, borrowed over the last two years a billion dollars to help pay operating costs. In communities, we couldn't we couldn't do that. You're not allowed to do that. Right. Uh, we uh, have a high debt rating in the state of Connecticut. We bond about 11 percent of our budget, which means those are funds that are not available to go to the things we so desperately need: education, transportation, investments. So we need to to bring some of that fiscal discipline to the state of Connecticut at the same time with a heart uh, right. to make sure that you have experience in how cities and towns run. And I have I have that to bring to the table. So All it's right. a great time of tremendous opportunities to make this state a great state and to keep young people living in our state, mm -hmm. which I think is the biggest challenge facing us over the next four years. All right. Well, I wish you um, good luck. It will be challenging. I know that already that the uh, race has been very aggressive, and we wish you good luck in the thank months you, to come. Thanks, thanks, Mary. Thanks for me. Mary Glassman, she is running for lieutenant governor. We thank her for being here. Up next, who pays attention to August political primaries? Well, this year it turns out lots of people are watching. We get some expert analysis on this heated campaign season coming up.